This morning I have a special guest to read John 1, 1 through 18 for us. As I was talking to my wife this week, she said, oh, I was going to do a video for you of, the, of one of the scriptures. And so uh, I said, okay, let's, let's do it for this Sunday. And it turned out it's John 1, which is her absolute favorite scripture in the whole world. And so uh, she read it and sent it to us. A reading from the very first chapter of the Gospel of John. Before time itself was measured, the voice was speaking. The voice was and is God. This celestial word remained ever present with the Creator. His speech shaped the entire cosmos immersed in the practice of creating. All things that exist were birthed in him. His breath filled all things with a living, breathing light. A light that thrives in the depths of darkness, blazes through murky bottoms. It cannot and will not be quenched. A man named John, who was sent by God, was the first to clearly articulate the source of this light. This baptizer put in plain words the elusive mystery of the divine light so all might believe through him. Some wondered whether he might be the light, but John was not the light. He merely pointed to the light the true light who shines upon the heart of everyone was coming into the cosmos. He entered our world, a world he made, yet the world did not recognize him, even though he came to his own people. They refused to listen and receive him. But for all who did receive and trust in him, he gave them the right to be reborn as children of God, he bestowed this birthright not by human power, but by the initiative, by God's will. The voice took on flesh and became human and chose to live alongside us. We have seen him enveloped in undeniable splendor, the one true son of the father evidenced in the perfect balance of grace and truth. John the Baptist testified about him and shouted, This is the one I've been telling you is coming. He is much greater than I am because he existed long before me. Through this man, we all receive gifts of grace beyond our imagination. You see, Moses gave us rules to live by, but Jesus, the anointed, offered us gifts of grace and truth. God, unseen until now, is revealed in the voice, God's only Son, straight from the Father's heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sometimes technology is wonderful. It allows us to be able to uh, see and be with people that we would not be able to. Uh, and so it was great that uh, Deacon Reverend Julie Wilson, my wife, was able to uh, share that scripture with us this morning. What is peace? This week we're looking at peace. We lit the peace candle, but what is peace? Well, there is world peace, you know, the type where there is no warring and madness between countries and between people. We often think about that type of peace when we are talking about peace. Advent peace is something more personal. We must find that inner peace, that peace that passes all understanding that can only come to us through God and through belief in Jesus the Christ, the light of the world. If we all have that inner peace, then the global peace will happen naturally. Let me give you an example from this morning. Uh, 
On Sunday mornings, I get up early, and I want to make sure everything is done properly. So I came this morning and, and went in through the downstairs and, came on and, and t put on the heat and came up here and turned on some lights. And I went to go to the main door to unlock that for people that might come in that way, the tech team and others. And I went to open the door, and it wouldn't budge. It wouldn't move. And I had realized that while we had shoveled downstairs and put salt on downstairs so people could come up that way, it had not been done up here. So I get in my car and I run home and I get my shovel and, and I start, I take the shovel and I put it in and it cracks and breaks. I said, okay, I got another shovel. Get back in the car, go back home, get the other shovel, get back in the car, get up here, go to put that one in and hmm, it breaks also. Now, what do you do in moments like that? Is it frustrating? Yes. But I know people that that would ruin their whole day, maybe even week. They'd be so focused on that that they wouldn't be able to find inner peace. They'd be so focused on that that then they're angry with everyone else and the whole rest of the world. And on an Advent, we're supposed to find this inner peace that God can give us. The great light prophesied by Isaiah in today's text is echoed in the, in the first strains of John's gospel good news. The light that brings peace, that saves the people from all that would extinguish it, has been here from the beginning. The word is made flesh and dwells among us. Will we believe it? Will we continue to put flesh on it, embodying the peace meant for all humanity? Will we allow ourselves to receive that peace in the midst of our lives? So that peace that was meant to be received starts with us and then illuminates to those around us and eventually to the world. The Isaiah reading for this morning, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. On this week of peace, we encounter a prophecy from Isaiah that lays out the qualities of a just and righteous ruler. The authority that rests upon the shoulders of good rulers is dependent upon the endless and substantive peace that can, be, can provide for their people, where the weak are protected from the strong who may perpetuate and perpetrate violence against them. There is much debate about what child Isaiah is describing, but the description is in keeping with other instances in Hebrew text that describe a peace that is not a false one in which some are muzzled in order to keep the peace. This is the type of leader we want as well. It is talking about a kingdom where we all are treated fairly and where justice is for all. And then we continue on to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not and shall not overcome it. Of course, there is no doubt in the gospel writer John's mind that Jesus is the fulfillment of the child come to bring peace. The child foretold of in Isaiah. Jesus, the word, was in the beginning with God and has been present throughout human history. John's gospel is written later than all the rest and is meant to inspire people of faith and to faith to see the Jesus story as the origin story from the beginning of time. And so it is logical that Jesus would be described as light, the first act of creation. 
This light then becomes flesh and makes a home among us, gifting humankind with a well-lit room in that house and a clear vision of the pathways to enlarging the peace, enlarging the houses of God that we create to all people. Like John the Baptist, we are to testify to the light, the light that is Jesus, and in the way the light shines now to others. That light that radiates from within us, from a peace that God bestows upon us through our faith in the light of the world. Each week I've been sharing with you documentaries that, that talk about people that have gone through hard times and how music has sustained them. Emerging from the strong tradition of freedom singers, Sweet Honey and the Rock is a group that's as soulfully rich as, it, as they are provocative. Using song to stand in unison, five African-American women sing solely a cappella, along with a sign language translator. Their music evokes stories from their past, encourages introspection in the present, and inspires progress for the future. Since it was founded in 1973, over 20 different women have contributed to the Grammy Award-winning group's Distinct Sound, which embraces semblances of gospel, blues, hip-hop, and yes, a political tone. The film features a trove of concert and rehearsal footage as it follows the group on their 30th anniversary tour. It also reminds us that music has spoken to and given peace and strength to our African-American brothers and sisters Many of their ancestors were enslaved in our nation. Even after slavery ended, they have experienced and continue to experience discrimination and racism. Faith in the light of God has sustained their community. Rosa Parks had a peace that passed all understanding as she sat on that bus, not worried about what was going to happen to her. Martin Luther King Jr. used music often in speeches to convey the sense of God's peace in the midst of the strife his community was experiencing. Just this last week, when in a historical African-American church had its signs removed and their church and the, from their church grounds and then lit on fire in the streets, we heard their leaders showing resilience and inner peace while confronting the hurtful actions perpetuated against them. When we have true peace, when others mean to cause us harm or rile us up, we can have quiet, resilient strength that comes from true inner peace. It allows us to act in a way that does not respond in hatred or returning harm for harm but by standing up against the harm in ways that reflect the Christ child, the light of the world. Here is a song from the full-length concert of Sweet Honey in the Rock, where they sing a song about peace, which we all long for, regardless of the color of our skin or the other things that fallen humanity has used to turn us into warring parties. Uh, you know, when we uh, came into town, I noticed that there were children jumping up and down on the trampoline. And I saw people holding hands and walking the streets and just experiencing this beautiful, beautiful place. And I realized, you know, everywhere we go in the world, most people want the same thing. Is it pay, peace, love, peace. Standing for freedom, freedom till he comes. 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 
African-American brothers and sisters had faith in God's light breaking forth in the midst of enslavement and continue to have faith when confronted with systemic racism. How can we not have faith when we are confronted with injustice and problems in our own lives? If they could turn to music and faith in God to sustain them and give them peace, shouldn't we be able to in the midst of what often pales in comparison, like two broken shovels. Further, we need to be part of helping the light shine in the darkness by helping others in need, by not allowing people to be treated unfairly, coming to the aid of those who had their peace stripped from them. Remember, the word is made flesh and dwells among us. The child came into this world, and Christ the King is on the heavenly throne this day. The reign is now. Will we believe it? Will we continue to put flesh on it? And by embodying the peace meant for all humanity. Do you believe in the light so much that you will not act in fear that often comes from the darkness? You see, that darkness comes when we fear, and often it means that fear causes us to lash out at people that do not look or act like us or believe the same things as us. We don't trust in God. We don't have illuminating peace within us. We decide we must retaliate, and so we lash out. We fail to see when others are also in pain, are also hurting. We are afraid to take action or unwilling to take action that might set things right because we're afraid that might mean less for us or afraid it might negatively affect us. Yet, that is not the way the light of God works. We must allow the light of Christ to glow within us such that we have peace that allows us to enter into the darkness and to not be afraid. Advent is about us trying to live out the kingdom that has not yet fully come into this world. That we are willing to reach out into the darkness with inner peace to help create a world that looks like the one Jesus came to bring forth. That we allow God to use us to shine the light into the world to create justice and allow people to experience God's peace. But first... You and I, we must all believe in the light, the light that came for all people. And you must allow that light to illuminate your soul. You must trust that your faith in the light means no matter what happens, you will always be in that light because of your faith. 
that no one can take that light from you. And then, and then with the faith that God will not extinguish that light, you use to walk into the darkness that is all around us. We boldly go into places that would formally scare us. We no longer sit in fear, paralyzed by the darkness around us, but instead go out sharing God's light with the world. Jesus is coming. The light of the world is shining. Will you let it illuminate your life, your soul, this very day? Let us pray. Holy One, in the midst of much darkness that has broken forth into this world, let us double down on our faith in you, trusting in you. Lord, lend us that peace that passes all understanding that can only come through faith in Jesus Christ so that we may be light bearers to the world, that we may not sit alone in darkness, afraid, paralyzed by fear. Lord, give us that peace so that we may bound forth through the doors of our homes and out into the world, bearing that light to a world that needs it more than ever, Lord. Kindle the light in each of us. And then, Lord, be with us as we go out into the world to share that light. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. This morning, the sermon actually is ending with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This hymn, originally written in Latin, takes us back over 1,200 years to monastic life in the 8th or 9th century. Seven days before Christmas Eve, monasteries would sing the O Antiphons in, in anticipation of Christmas Eve, when the 8th Antiphon, O Virgo, Virginum, O Virgin of Virgins, would be sung before and after Mary's canticle, the Magnificat. The Latin metrical form of the hymn was composed as early as the 12th century. John Mason Neal, the now famous uh, architect of the Oxford movement, discovered the Latin hymn in the appendix of an early 18th century manuscript. Neil, a translator of early Greek and Latin hymns, included it in his influential, in, influential collection, Medieval Hymns and Sequences, in 1851. British hymnologist J.R. Watson provided a context for the antiphons included on the second page after the hymn in our United Methodist Hymnal. The antiphons, sometimes called the O antiphons, or the great O's, were De designated to concentrate the mind on the coming Christmas, enriching the meaning of the incarnation with a complex series of references from the Old and New Testament. You'll see up on the screen them listed out in their Latin. Put together, the first letter of the second word of each antiphon spells sar cor. If read backwards, the letters form a two-word acrostic, ero cross, meaning I will be present tomorrow. I know, you thought it was just albums, rock albums, where you could play them backwards and there was a message in there. Oh, no, no, no. We even have it in the midst of the life of the church. All of the Latin attributions to the coming Messiah are from the Old Testament, except Emmanuel, which is found both in Isaiah 7.14 and Matthew 1.23. Matthew quotes Isaiah virtually verbatim, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The O Come, the O Emmanuel Antiphon, which traditionally sung on the night before Christmas, Eve, revealing the meaning of the liturgical riddle through the completion of of the acrostic. So as our final act of preparation for Christmas, I'm going to share the verbal etiphons, and then we all sing the corresponding verses, which will end with the most known verse containing Emmanuel. Let this be a preparation for our souls to receive the Christ child on Christmas, and for us to experience true hope, love, peace, and joy. O wisdom, 
O holy word of God, you govern all creation with your strong yet tender care. Come and show your people the way of salvation. Oh, come thou wisdom from on high, who dressed all things mightily to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in O sacred Lord of ancient Israel, who showed yourself to Moses in the burning bush, who gave him the holy law on Sinai Mountain, come, stretch out your mighty hand to set us free. Oh, come, oh. flower of Jesse's stem. You have been raised up as a sign for all peoples. Kings stand silent in your presence. The nations bow down and worship before you. Come, let nothing keep you from coming to our aid. Oh, come thou rod of Jesse's stem from of David, O royal power of Israel, controlling at your will the gate of heaven, come, break down the prison walls of death for those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and lead your captive people into freedom. O come thou king of David, come.
radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, son of justice. Come, shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death. O oh, come thou day spring from on high and cheer us by thy drawing nigh disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadow of all the nations, the only joy of every human oh, heart. Lord, come, dear Lord, come, oh, peace now, God, the mighty arch of man, come and save the creatures you fashioned from the dust. lawgiver, desire of the nations, savior of all people, come and set us free, Lord our God. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive. Emmanuel. Announcements. Uh, for the announcements, I'm just going to focus on Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas ser Eve services. We do not know what the weather will be. And so you will need to wait to see uh, an email that comes out with instructions about how we are going to be worshiping at the promised land. Uh, snow is covered there, so uh, we don't want to drive on the snow. If the snow all melts, well, then it might be too mushy to drive upon up where we would normally go. We might need to stay uh, below in our vehicles, uh, and some people can walk up to the pavilion. We'll figure that all out. Uh, but we will have a 5 p.m. service, and it will be a praise service. And we will have a 7 p.m. traditional service, and it will be online also. And then uh, there is going to be an online traditional service with a love feast at 9 p.m. And that will be online only. And then there will be a communion at 10 p.m. here at church that will be very simple. 
Uh, there will not be much tech involved in it. Uh, you're going to come in to a sanctuary that's lit with candles. We'll have a little song, a little prayer. You'll receive elements and then go on your way with the light that you will be carrying. The sanctuary will not be well lit. You'll carry a candle with you. It'll be a battery-operated one, so you don't know where you need to worry about wax. It is also limited in capacity. If you wish to be here for that 10 o'clock service, let me know. Call me, email me, text me, or call into the office. I'll get the message, uh, and I'll be the one that knows who is coming and, uh, and will reach out to you to let you know that you are part of those that are able to come to that service. I know that some people really need that. Uh, part of this was inspired by Karen Weibel, who said the sanctuary looks so beautiful. It's a shame that no one's in the sanctuary to see it. And so I think I have come up with a way where we're able to do this safely and within any of the rules and regulations in the state of Maryland. Uh, but it will be a very small number that will be able to come to that. Uh, be looking in uh, for the blog and through email for more details. Our final song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Our carol of resistance. Each week we've been having Christmas carols and telling the story of resistance that they have. And it's part of the Christmas songs that were created by people who endured brutal hardship as the result of African colonization and North American slavery. But though people of African descent were ripped from much of their cultural heritage, they maintain their heritage of group song, punctuated by West African rhythms and vocal stylings. Of course, the safest thing for oppressed peoples to sing about was religious beliefs that, first forced upon them by their oppressors, later gave them hope in the midst of their suffering. Go Tell It on the Mountain is probably the best-known African-American Christmas song and the word seeker and watchman are, are thought by some to have been code words for those seeking freedom on the Underground Railroad. It was made popular by the Fisk Jubilee Singers in the 19th century as these college students, themselves freed slaves, traveled the country to raise money and awareness. They were turned away from hotels, well, railway waiting rooms, and even some churches because of their color. As we sing, let us honor them. Honor all who have endured slavery and the continued systemic racism caused by safe slavery. Let us go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Wherever you are, as you are able, please stand to sing this closing hymn. Jesus Christ. 
You're invited to pick up this week's candle, if you have one with you, and hold it high for the benediction. In this season of waiting, know this, we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the light has dawned and shines on all people, fill the night left by sadness with messages of peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that peace alive in you and that spur you in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs>